I'm here today with Katie O'Brien with Katie O'Brien websites. <laughs> what do you like? How do you dot com? I don't know. <laughs> it's Katie O'Brien. <laughs> I'm here with the Katie O'Brien. That's right. I'm no. here with the <laughs> Katie O'Brien, uh, website designer specifically working with interior designers. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about websites, personal branding, photography, and everything in between. So the thing about BNIs is I hated the little bells yeah. or the alarms when people would talk too much. I appreciated it, but I also really hated it because uh, in the beginning before I learned, it was just so embarrassing yeah. for me at least. I hated all networking events. I like <laughs> would force myself to go because that's what everyone says you're supposed to be doing. And I would go there and I get all dressed up. And I'm like, this Why is am terrible. I here? And what I did you hate so about much. networking? I just felt like everything was very like surface. Like aside from like you, mm -hmm. I think, probably like the only person I've like I met like a couple of them but I was just I'm such an introvert I'm so terrible at small talk I get so awkward I like fumble all my words and then I'm like all dressed up and I'm like can't wait to go put my leggings on and get behind a computer and yeah but then they're like oh let's let's have a coffee day and so I'm like okay and then we I'm like oh you know we would but it just felt like very like way out of my element and then I realized I could build my entire business online and I don't want to have to do any of those. So I was like, what am I doing? I'm never doing this again. See, I 100% agree with that. However, I will say it's how I started my whole business. Yes. I do feel like the, like you have to have, like, I feel like none of my clients were there or mm -hmm. ideal clients or anything. And so I felt like it, it felt off or like the bar seat or like the later like the happy hours and stuff I never went to this um really <laughs> I was like but I could see like local photography yeah. business like yeah that might be important like you have to meet people right but uh I still don't I at the very beginning that's what I suggest people do mm -hmm. is you know how to do it and do it right yeah but at the same token I'm not an extrovert I actually hate like I and wine by like you said putting on the yoga pants Going out, feeding my chickens, going on the five mile walks, yes. sweating in the heat right now. Yeah. I would rather do that a hundred times versus like, yes, I agree. meet people. Yeah, <laughs> even though I'm a photographer. <laughs> but you're like behind the camera. That's right. That's, That's right. A little bit easier, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, because. So most photographers, that's what they do. They think they're behind the cameras, they can like shy away. But right. you're actually front and center, like you're the uh, conductor. That's true. Orchestrating everything. If you feel like you can just hide behind the camera, then you're probably not doing a good job building a business because right. you're not creating. Whenever I like train my team, I'm like, yeah. you're on stage. When you hear the clients hitting those steps, we're always listening for when they right. come up the steps, you gotta put on yeah. that face that act yeah. because nobody is just normally even like um my daughter you know before you came in she's sitting down and she's super relaxed as she's sitting there yeah. and i'm like layla this is not an alamond uh personality <laughs> i said that's a mcdonald's personality <laughs> if you're working at alamond you are like yeah. up here you're that's very true right because for an introvert i'm not this isn't like normally how i'm always yes. you know like but when somebody comes in, like you do have to put yes. on that persona. Mm -hmm. And so for me, networking, always doing that, it's exhausting. so draining. Yeah, I could see that. So draining. <laughs> yeah. All right, so tell me a little bit about how did you like get into what you're doing now? Like, give me like the phases, because you've gone through a couple of phases, because mm -hmm. I was there for the beginning, <laughs> at you least were. one of them. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm like, I don't know how far you want me to go back. <laughs> I mean, there are definitely, I will say, I worked for a small business uh, as like an administrative assistant because I didn't have a college degree, still don't have a college degree of any sort. Um, and I just couldn't like, I just couldn't figure out what I was going to do with my life. So I was like, I'm just going to go get a job and then go to college forever until I figure out that thing. And I just remember like really like the customer service. Like I was always like, whatever I did, I just excelled. Like it was like super important that I did like the best of the best job, like the professionalism, the emails, like listening to the managers, like just learning and growing in this like little admin assistant job. Uh, and I remember creating a relationship with the owner and just remembering like, I wanna be boss. And I'm like, I don't know if it's of this company <laughs> or somewhere and not like an ego sense of boss, but just like, then I can control like 
that does sound like an ego, but like I can control the experience and the outcome and all like the little intricacies, but then also my own schedule and freedom. Like I just really love the idea of just having the freedom to do whatever that is in a business. Um, so I definitely did not become the boss of that company. <laughs> um, I ended up having, uh, like getting married and having babies and so forth. And that was what made me go into entrepreneurship. And that's when I met you. Uh, I was actually four weeks pregnant with my daughter and I was like, we're gonna start a business. Well, I will say I started a business before that and I kind of did all of the online learning. So it wasn't, I do remember. It was 2011, so I didn't meet you yet. I started the business, I used my um, engagement photos and wedding photography cropped it, it. Yeah. as my headshot for my website. <laughs> so I cropped the bridal dress out and I tried to change the color of my dress so it wouldn't look like a dress. Um, that was what I launched. And so that was a coaching business. And the reason I launched the coaching business was because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And every single thing I went after in college felt wrong and I kept changing my major and I kept trying to figure it out and I discovered the coaching industry and I thought, oh my goodness, you can get paid for this. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start a business, I'm gonna stay home with my kids and that's essentially where I thought like my whole life would be. Um, but I found you was when I was like, okay, no more wedding dress at shine. <laughs> okay, no more like cheap website presence and I noticed, I was like, okay, everyone that I looked up to in the online industry, they had like stellar photos and I didn't know how like they achieved those. And mm -hmm. I remember, I think I found you on like the chamber website. Okay. I and was like trying to remember, how did we actually meet? I do. I remember, <laughs> I think I filled out like a form mm -hmm. and you legitimately called me. I want to say it was like that day. I was like, oh my, hello. Like <laughs> I remember exactly where I was sitting and I was so official because it was like the first like investment that I was going to really make in myself and my business thought like, hi, I'm doing this headshot thing. And so we scheduled it and I didn't even, like we, I was already married. I had my coaching. I was in coaching, my coaching program yep. like, to be certified. And so I was working with a couple people, but I definitely did not feel legitimate mm -hmm. until like I had headshots. <laughs> do you think it was the headshots or do you think it was the investment? Because obviously you invested in your coaching program. Yeah. But or was it just the headshots? I don't know. I don't know. I feel, I feel like after I got my headshots, uh -huh. I was like, wow, you're not faking anymore. <laughs> like, you're legit. And it was just, I think it was just like the visual of that. And then I could like use them on my website and my social media and my business cards. And I felt like it gave me such a substantial like, presence like branding yeah. I guess of yeah. having that. it's like getting those it's like the real estate agents when they get their business cards they're like now we're in business buddy right, right? <laughs> and so it was, but I, I remember I was and I was I remember I was four weeks pregnant because I was like I'm gonna get like big here I need to yeah. get these headshots Quickly. done I wanted it I had that done I finished this coaching certification um and then that was when I left my nine to five because mm -hmm. I was still working like up until I was pregnant and it like, I don't know, I'm like, how do I even continue on that phase? Like coached, stayed home, uh, made very little money, like very little. I probably invested, no, I know I invested more money than I made after leaving my nine to five. So it's like, I left my nine to five and I was like, full time, we're gonna do this. Things were ramping up and then it just like, everything stopped. And I remember income wise, like, oh my goodness this is gonna fail. And, uh, and my husband was super supportive and it, we had his income, so we were making it work. Um, but then it started like really picking up and what happened was I really niched down in who I was working with. And mm -hmm. I- As a coach. As a coach. And so I was kind of bouncing around and trying to find like who I wanted to work with and like I would get really excited about an idea and then I'd get out there and then I was no one wants coaching for whatever that was a lot of it was like new moms or like pregnant moms and like pregnant new moms don't know they need like coaching until they just want sleep yeah they want <laughs> sleep they want survival they want the best book like you know yeah. like and so it was kind of like trial and error figuring out 
who I really wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally discovered it was professional moms, mom entrepreneurs, helping them run like the business side and the life side of things, mm -hmm. that was when things started really to pick up. And yeah. all of my marketing was streamlined and clear. I felt like really excited about what I was doing. Uh, and then I got pregnant with my son and everything changed. <laughs> yeah, what changed? So that was uh, essentially when I realized that two kids aren't the same. Uh -huh. My daughter was very calm, napped, was quiet, like just fine on her own as like a little baby. And my son was attached to me. So he was born and I thought I was just going to like return to the wait list of clients. I was like, go back into this, stay home with two kids, no big deal. And he didn't sleep. Uh, he didn't eat, drink from a bottle. He would, my husband would hold him and he would just scream at the top of his lungs. And so that was when, cause you're on the phone with a lot of exactly. Calls. Yeah, exactly. So like my husband, like his schedule was flexible enough where I could be like, okay, 11 to four, I'm gonna have coaching calls. But then 11 to four, I'd have to like hide in a bedroom with the door shut and I could still hear my kids screaming like all the way on the other side of the house. And like, I can't coach someone like that. Like my stuff, my life was, I felt so out of whack. Like what if, I felt very inauthentic trying to help other people run their lives and businesses when mine was so chaotic. And so I told my husband, I was like, I can't, I, I gotta, I gotta stay home. Like I was like, I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. That's what I think is going to be easier. And I definitely like thought that was the, like what I always wanted in my mind, I guess briefly on figuring that out. And then uh, I realized that I did, I wanted a little something like for me. So I told coaching clients, I'll return like when my kids are in school, cause mm -hmm. I can't survive doing this. Then uh, fall 2015 mm -hmm. and then January 2016 is when I launched the business that I have today. Uh, so long <laughs> So basically all that money that you invested in for the coaching was not actually a waste. It just helped get you yes. <laughs> to yes. this next business. And honestly, what I was like, I thought like I didn't make a lot of money coaching until like towards the end where I was like, wow, this is like great. This is sustainable until I had the, my son. Uh, but it was like all of that experience. And yeah. so now, and it's funny too, like I find myself coaching my clients mm -hmm. and I find myself like all of the business experience that mm -hmm. it, I feel like that's what I really loved about the coaching. Like coaching, it was great, but I always kind of felt a little timid and a little like, I didn't want to be too outspoken. It just, it felt a little off, mm -hmm. but I, I thought that was just because I didn't hit like success yet. Yeah. But honestly, I just feel like it wasn't what I was meant to be doing. Mm -hmm. But the business side, like the websites, the tech, the like talking about growing a business and marketing and digital strategy, like all of that, mm -hmm. I loved. And so I feel like that was just kind of prepping me to make the leap into website design mm -hmm. and do what I'm doing now. That's awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> So tell me, okay, so basically, I know I was like, I feel like I no, need to that was cut all of that because no. I was like, I didn't even get to the phases of what I'm doing now. That's a good story, right? <laughs> um, okay, so when it comes to the, you got really excited about mm -hmm. the back end, essentially mm -hmm. of running a business. Yeah. How did you choose websites? So. It was actually my husband who was like, you know, you can get paid for this. And I thought, no. Like, what were you doing when he said you could get paid for so this? So he started a power washing business. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, let me do your website. <laughs> I was like, I want to make you a logo. Because it was just, it was fun. It was creative. And he got so many compliments on his website. And he was like, everyone kept asking him, like, who did your website? Who did your website? And he's like, Katie, you could like make really good money doing this. And I'm like, no, it's just fun. Like that is too complicated. And for me, I just didn't, I knew how to do it all. I didn't know how to do it as a business. Mm -hmm. And so that really scared me. And so he said that like when I was back coaching. Uh, and so when I started my business, I was still, I didn't have the confidence to be like a website designer. So I was like, I'm going to be a virtual assistant for websites. Like just the phrasing of like, looking back I'm like could you just own it like could you just step into that and be like I know what I'm doing own it and so I didn't I was a virtual assistant for websites and in um, WordPress and um but what happened was once I started getting in there and working with my clients um 
I would see their websites, the back end of things, or how the tech is all set up, and it would be terrible. And Or I could see them hiring people who are not doing them justice, and I would try to voice that, and I would try to say, hey, what about this, or we should do this, and I would have all this knowledge, and I felt like that virtual assistant title was more of like a, here's a checklist, do this, and they didn't care about anything else in return. Also, my price points were like way low. Um, and they were probably paying these other people a lot more, yes. and so yes. they're thinking, they're, they're the experts, not yes. virtual assistant Katie. Exactly, exactly, and I was like, I can't, I can't do it anymore, and so then, I slowly, like I remember I took like a web developer course and a website design course and like all these things to like learn this skill to be able to have this title I can give myself. And that I just, you already knew how to do. I knew everything in the course. I was like, okay, thank you for the validation. Taking my money and that certificate. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay. Um, and so finally I did... I just, uh, I had like a wait list of clients. I was like, hey, this is the service that I'm gonna do. Like I'll set up your little website theme, but after this day, like it's gone. Where I like was doubling my prices like every few months because I was only charging like $700. Which is so smart to do. Yes, and I, I had to, and I felt like the higher my prices went, the more serious I was taken. Mm -hmm. And I was, the better the results that they were getting too. And so the, some clients would, like early on clients would be like, here, just install this theme. And it would take no time at all, but then they'd want it completely customized. And yeah. so they're like, oh, but I wanted this change and that change and this change. I'm like, that, you, you can't do that yeah. right in this thing. And so I was like, and so that's when I really reframed, like probably mid to late 2016 is when I was like, we're doing custom. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing themes. You're not choosing your theme. We can meet and we can strategize. What are you inspired by? What websites do you like? And then I'm going to build that mm -hmm. on a platform that allows me to completely customize it for you to whatever you want, to whatever serves your business. But at the same time that you can also update if you want. Because I think yeah. that was the scary thing. Like when I got started, people were hearing custom and they were thinking, I can't update it myself. Yeah. How do I change a photo? How do I update the copy? And so me getting started, it was really important to be custom, but also user friendly for them to be able to update if they mm -hmm. wanted to update it. So what are what were some of the biggest mistakes that you saw that oh. like really inspired you? You said the tech was all messy. Mm -hmm. What were some of those biggest mistakes that you see maybe even today? Yeah, so I will definitely say the things that like I see the most that I'm seeing like mistakes on websites are there's so much content. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on. And you're a minimalist on. too, right? I kind of. I feel like I used to identify as a minimalist, but then I used to get these like side eyes. And so I just like things clean and tidy there and orderly there and I don't go. like a lot of stuff. Because yeah. like, I guess minimalism now is like a, a complete like a thing where people will like live with like three things in their whole yes. lives. <laughs> yes, and I do like, and I I do love it, and I still like every like oh, a good purge if I'm having a bad day. Yeah. Like, that will just like it's, like hits my heart, like it does. Um, and so, but honestly, like I just feel like the strategy behind like clean, simple, and that doesn't mean like like you get to a website and they're like, welcome, you know, like, yeah, click here. Like, that's not like, it's just, I feel like so many people feel like their websites have to have every single piece of information about them and their business and their past and their services. And it's just everywhere. And then they have a thousand photos, whether that's stock or of themselves or whatever that is, no clear direction. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, trying to drive down a highway with cars going every which way, completely bumper to bumper, and you're just like, I just And need. signs everywhere, or you don't know right. where to click, and right? Then, yeah. I'm going on this metaphor here. Right, it is, <laughs> and it's like, you're, you're like, oh my goodness, like, and it's just like, and then think about like a country road where like, it's just open, like you know exactly where to go, there's only one spot to go, you know, like it's just clear and clean. Um, and so I feel like the biggest mistake I see is like they just feel like their website is where everything goes where everything goes and that's that's just really overwhelming for your website visitors where do you what, what do you think should be on the website so the bare minimum that gets people to either reach out to you buy or like inquire about your services and a lot of times with me, so the people that I work with, they have a higher end, it's a service, it's a luxury service that they're providing. And so most of the time, like they're not going to be spending tens of thousands of dollars, like just like 
by now and then let's just see what happens next like they want to yeah. talk to someone or they want to know like they want to get that first email or they want to get an investment guide or more information mm -hmm. and so thinking in your mind like what can i put on my website that's going to give them just enough information that then will entice them to reach out and i definitely don't mean like don't put prices on there or your location or anything like that like give them the important information mm -hmm. build rapport with them but then direct them to take action so i feel like the most important thing is really to to outline the visitor's experience on your website like what is the goal of your website what do you want people to do what's the first step that people should be taking to work with you and then how is every single thing on your website every picture every button every word supporting that overall goal you know like as you gave that metaphor this entire time i've been thinking the difference between walking into a store that is so chaotic you know think of like a thrift store yeah there's just clothes everywhere with signs you know auction items just everything and you're like oh, 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 oh. like i have no idea what to go to you just have this feeling of overwhelm mm -hmm. for some thrift store shoppers excitement you know yeah. <laughs> of like just digging into just like piles of stuff yes you know and then you've got those high-end luxury stores where you walk in and there's like three racks yep and then on each rack there's like seven pieces of clothing yeah. and there's somebody standing there waiting for you mm -hmm. almost like inviting you into the showcase and just leading you to exactly the piece that you need yes that's such a good <laughs> such a good example yeah it's exactly like <laughs> that's that. how i was seeing it and <laughs> yes yeah i see visually so i specifically work with photographers mm -hmm. and then for headshots local business owners so a lot of them are all service-based. 90% of them are real estate agents, or maybe not 90, like 75 are real estate agents. Um, a lot of times they're using websites that their brokerage is giving them, mm -hmm. or for photographers, they're just grabbing a theme mm -hmm. and using it. A lot of them like to use like Squarespace or, or what's the other one? Um, Wix. Wix, yeah. yes, because they're cheap and like out of the box, yes. ready to go. For somebody who's like DIYing it, mm -hmm what would you tell them besides keeping it clean simple mm -hmm. supporting your one to three things or one thing you yeah. need them to do what are some other things that they need to consider so i love that you brought up squarespace and wix because as a wordpress designer i actually recommend if you're diying there's more like bells and whistles there's more like flex Ability, I think with Wix and so if you're not a designer you can kind of get all excited and like and then it looks like a thrift store, store. You know? <laughs> and you got all these things going on um, Squarespace you really don't have the luxury of doing that um, where you kind of have this theme or this general layout you install it and then you plug in your photos and you plug in your information and um, so I would say like if they're DIY is that was that the question if yeah they're DIYing, yeah what like to put how do you there? So I would say like pay, okay. So in my mind, I'm thinking like structurally. <laughs> like this is how you work. This is how you work with clients. Yes. You create customized websites. Yes. You don't just create, you don't just grab a theme. No. And then upload it with photos and words. No. You start from the white screen. <laughs> yeah. I start white screen and we do a strategy session in a Google doc. Um, and, and I mean, the first question I ask them is, well, I will say, so the first question I ask them is like, what do you want, like website wise? Like, what do you want people to do? And it's, it's really surprising. A lot of people were like, wow, that's a great question. <laughs> or like, know. they haven't, it's such a simple question, but yeah. most people are like, I need a website because you need a website. Yeah. And this is, I need this page because you're supposed to have that page and I need this. And, it, and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you want them to do? Like, what's yeah. the goal here? And so identifying that, but then also too, like, even if you're DIYing, who's your ideal client? Mm -hmm. And so... I feel like that really gets overlooked too. Again, it's I need a website because I have a business and that's what you're supposed to do. It's like, okay, great, but who are we building the website for? So we've yeah. got your goal, now who's visiting your website? Mm -hmm. And so identifying who that ideal client is and getting really, really clear, what are they looking for? What are their, what's their life like? What's their home life like? Their professional life, like yeah. what do they want? What do they not want? What are their hopes and dreams and all of that? So you work specific, cause that could feel overwhelming for somebody who, which by the way, most business owners don't have the answer to that. Cause yeah. I used to do a lot of consulting. Yeah. They don't know any of those answers. Yes. You work within a specific niche now, yes. probably because you pretty much have the answers <laughs> to help guide them. Yeah. So. I will say 
so you're right. So some people don't. And honestly, a lot of times, and I think even on my like contact form on my website, I'm like, tell me about your target audience or your ideal client. And if they don't know that, that's a huge red flag for me. Uh, That's, that's, I don't think you're ready to work with it, like a website designer because it's a a custom experience. And so how am I going to create something for someone we don't even know about, you know, like color, psychology, like, um, logo design, like fonts, you know, imagery and all of that, all of that, you know, yes, it needs to be authentic to their personal brand, but it also needs to be speaking to who their target audience is. And if we don't know that, then like what, how, honestly, if I don't know that my job is super difficult and then I'll give them something and they'll be like, well, this doesn't feel right. And yeah. Be like, oh, well, we have no like baseline to go off of. It's like, yeah. oh, well, I just thought this might look good. Like, I don't want to do that. The investment is way too high for me to like build something for someone I don't really know. Um, so I do, I, I, that's a red flag for me. And a lot of times if they're like, I'm not sure, I'll say, okay, great. You need to go do some work and mm-hmm. you need to figure that out or mm-hmm. hire a coach or get consulting and have that. And I do have like questions and I have resources for them to like kind of work through that. If they're like, no, 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 like I'll figure it out. I'll get that clarity. Yeah. But the clarity has to be there for your business, your services, your ideal client, the website goal, all of that has to happen before you can have a successful website. I love that. I love that that's, it's a qualifier for you. Yeah. So do you have somebody then, see that might be a great connection for you if you don't do it yourself yeah. to have somebody who helps with that clarity of like, here's a clarity coach mm-hmm. <laughs> to help you really niche down or like something that I've done with my clients is I'll ask them, let's just go through your last five clients. Yes. Let's talk about them. The ones that just made your heart happy. Yeah. Because a lot of times people just don't sit down and do that work. Like right. you said, you've got questions to kind of guiding through it. They don't do that work to really figure out Oh, so that's who my ideal client is. I thought it was this group of, I thought it was the new moms. Right, right? <laughs> been there. <laughs> but it's like, no, 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 because now you actually specifically work with interior designers. Yes. I know I'm kind of steering off. How did sure. you get to interior designers? So I love the industry. Like, I love it. There, someone asked me this question, and I was like, I'm the type of person that just like frequents realtor.com just to look inside people's houses. <laughs> like, I do. It's just, even my husband's like, oh, we're moving? And I'm like, no, I just, I just want to look at all the houses. Some inspiration. Right? Like, I was like, no, I just, I just like houses. I like the interiors. And I'm also a huge homebody. So I would be home all day long, like, all the time if I could. It's just like when I walk into my home, it's like this sense of like, oh, And even for my kids, like creating that space, like when they have a hard day at school, they walk through that door and it's like they can just let go. And so supporting an industry that can help people create that environment and create that feeling and just create that sense of just home is awesome. Like I just, it's it's everything. I get so fired up. I get so excited giving them this platform. But I definitely wasn't always in the interior design space. I worked with coaches primarily because I knew the industry. I was coming out of that industry. I was very well known. I still have coaches reaching out to me. Uh, But I just wasn't as fired up about that industry. Mm -hmm. Kind of got to be like everything was the same. And then uh, there were some coaches that didn't necessarily agree with like business practices or the way that they did things. And I'm like, oh, I just kind of again felt that there wasn't that yes right i I hear this as a like reoccurring theme if you don't feel good about what you're doing you can't continue doing it i can't i can't and so i I had one interior designer i worked with her i think in 2018 she was referred to me by one of my copywriter friends and literally ever since i worked with her i was like how do I get more clients like her? She's amazing. She was great to talk to. Like, just like, I don't want to say like friendship wise, but like friendship wise, we just like connected, but I just loved her business and she listened and she trusted. And as a fellow designer, they also are a lot more trusting to hand over the, they kind of have that line of whatever you think you're the expert. And when you hear that as a designer, you just kind of like, oh, and you have the creative space to create something just for them that you know is going to rock. So she was kind of my inspiration, but then I got really kind of sick of what I was doing. And I also had some 
like family and like medical stuff come up where I didn't have enough time to work. And so when I did work, if it was draining or I didn't love it, I, I did, I had some, some medical things come up. And so honestly, I just got more ballsy and saying <laughs> yes or yes. no, where I was like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I was like, I don't have the time for this. And I have a smaller window of energy and a smaller window of time in my life and with my family and with myself. I want to do something that I want to like, that I like. And so finally I was like, done. I'm only going to work with interior designers. Yeah. And I just kind of, I was just like, it's like, I don't know the old saying, like life's too short to not do what you love and not in, I don't want to say that in like a foo-foo like kind of thing, but I could make that pivot. I could afford to make that pivot and I knew I was going to excel at it. And so I thought, what are you doing? You're playing small. You're not doing what you love. It's taken away from your health, your family time. Do something that you love that builds you up and that you know you can like just rock at and enjoy. Uh, so uh, I just kind of made the executive decision. I love that. You were the boss. Pivot. I was boss. You were the boss. You made the boss move. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna we were talking about um, interior designers. When you're working with your interior designers, mm -hmm. you had said that you didn't necessarily love the coaching industry, mm -hmm. I'm rephrasing my own words, because it started to feel like the same. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what was different in interior designers? Aren't they all the same or no? Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> I think, so I think for me, the, it was kind of all the same and I didn't love the industry. So I feel for me, the, I want to say also kind of like the challenge of the interior design industry is not like logo, big photo, you know, like how can we customize this and combine their personal branding with their yes. business I was gonna touch on and that. then build this beautiful online presence. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing that I really have found that I like about interior design too is just I'm really good at tech. Like I'm really good at websites. Like I know yeah. I'm really good at my job, not from an ego place. Just, I just really excel and I love it. My interior designers are very good at what they do, yeah. but they hate websites. Like they hate tech. And so it's also so satisfying to be able to let like uh, so many of my clients, like this has been a weight off my shoulders. Just knowing that I have you now as a part of my team and like you have this covered. It's so it's kind of like, I can do what I love and excel at it to support an industry that I love yeah. while they can focus on what they love and do what they love in their business. And so it's just like a win, win, win. You know, it's funny that you say that because that's how I felt about weddings. So I okay. used to photograph weddings. And so like, as I'm listening to your story, that's like my story in terms of like the weddings. Mm -hmm hated photograph. I loved my clients, mm -hmm. but I hated photographing weddings because I felt like it was the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again, just with different color flowers and different couples. It was the same, like the, there was never any drama, but the same yeah. interactions. And I was just like, Oh, it was, I felt so drained. I had to like have to hype myself up before a wedding. Like I had like music that I played to like get me into. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I, this isn't fair to my couples. Mm -hmm. They loved everything about it, but it wasn't fair that a photographer was showing up that was not in love right. with what they were doing. Yeah. I had to like drag myself to the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> and part of it was probably because I wasn't charging the type of prices mm -hmm. to get me excited to show up at the weddings. But I also part of it was just like, I wasn't excited yeah. for the 12 hour day. Yes. <laughs> and so when I went into photography, Similar, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, headshots, similar, it's still people. Right. I love it because each person is different. Mm -hmm. My style is the same, mm -hmm. but what I'm capturing of each person, the conversations, the interactions, just light me up. And now when I see a booking come on the calendar, especially when they book with me, <laughs> I'm like, yes, <laughs> let me learn more about this person. Like, what yeah. are they doing? Like, how can I make, what did, what did they have photographed? How do I make sure that it's 5,000 times better. Yeah. So I totally, yeah. Get it. And it's all about their personal brand. You touched on that. Yes. So important. And I feel like people don't realize that. And honestly, I don't think I realized that getting into the interior design space, like how it is. Like you do have your studios and your firms, like the larger ones that is a little less personal branding than 
you would if it's, you know, an interior designer with like an assistant and like a couple other people, like a small team. Um, but it is like, like you had said, as a photographer, you know, you have your style, like you definitely do. Like we always know like online, hey, that's Aaliyah's. Like, you know, like, you that's just know that. It, everyone knows that. And so they have their style, but they also are creating different projects for their families or their spaces. And so knowing that, but it, people are hiring them. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily, I mean, they are hiring the business. People are not necessarily hiring the business, mm -hmm. they're hiring the designer. Yeah. Same with me. People are not hiring my website design business. <laughs> they're hiring WordPress. Me. They're not looking for a WordPress site. No. They don't care what you're designing it on. No. And they're when they, like Google, when they Google, they're not like WordPress website builder design. Like that's not, I mean, at least you're not coming finding me or yeah. do I, want, I don't want to work with you if you are. <laughs> you yeah. know, they're, look, they're looking for website designer for interior designers or interior yeah. designer website design. And so it's like, they're looking for the person that they want to work with. And so having your personal brand align with everything else online, like having that all just blend and mesh together is so important. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So what are some of the ways I always like the number three? Okay. What are three ways that somebody can really integrate their personal brand into their website? So, Great question. <laughs> Number one, I would say is photography. Like start with photography. And I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you, but I really do. Like you need to have professional photography because I feel like it tells the story. So mm -hmm. not just of your work or your business or like from some cool stock photo, you know, or just photo site, like it needs to be personal branding, like photos of you, of your work, and kind of having that all together. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like number one that you want to do. Um, the next would be copywriting. So someone helping you, either helping you or doing it for you, like writing the words on your website. Mm -hmm. Because photos are great, but they also need a little bit of help with context. Exactly. Yeah. So having the, the balance of that to there together. Um, and then having the, I would say like personal branding that, so your photos, your website copy, and then I would say the, like the brand design and website design coming mm -hmm. together. And so, you know, having your photos, having your copy, and then having it all kind of pull together in this beautiful cohesive experience for your brand design. So like logos, fonts, colors, patterns, anything else visual, and then having your, um, like the flow of your website and everything. Yeah. And then even like, can I add one thing to that? Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about websites, photography, but social media. Yes. How big is social media for your clients, for you? How do you integrate the websites with social media? So social media, yay. Uh, <laughs> it took you a little while to get on it, didn't it? And I'm glad that you did, though, because I feel like people start there. Yeah. People start with social media. And they're yeah. like, how do you build a business on social media? And it's yeah. like, you build a business first. Like, you got to, like, again, yeah. like, ideal clients, services, branding. Like, what do you want? And so I am definitely the minority when it comes to social media. And so I try not to give my advice. And when I do give my advice to my clients, I say, hey, this is Katie advice. And this is not the norm. And if you Google this, it probably won't be found. And so I always say your website is your hub. Mm -hmm. So your online hub, hub. So anything that you do outside of your website should be, bring, be bringing people back to your website. Mm -hmm. And I say that because when it's strategically built, that's going to convert people into clients, into email subscribers, and so forth. It's your store. Exactly. It's your and store. So That's you want transactions. You want to be bringing people that way. Um, I feel like a lot of times nowadays, it's like we will, like people are like, oh, I want my Instagram, whatever thing. I should know this as a website designer. I don't. I don't. I always. I don't fight my clients, but I strongly encourage. I said we can put your little Instagram border like thing at the bottom with all your photos, and I was like, we can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't advise it, and I said, but but we can. Why do, Why do you not advise it? I think it's good to know the why. I think I know. But. Yes. So when someone's on your website, like we said in the beginning, we have a very clear goal that we want them to achieve. 
So if we are trying to get them to contact you, book a call, book a session, whatever that is, and you have your little Instagram photos of your vacation, of your work, or whatever it might be, that is saying, hey, look at me, hey, hey, hey. They're gonna click on that and they're gonna get lost in Instagram. Yeah. Or they're gonna click on that and they're gonna get lost somewhere else. They're gonna have all their notification, they're gonna have all these videos start playing at once. Like, And so it's so overwhelming to them and exciting because that's how social media is created. They're just gonna get stuck. And the chances of them coming back to your website and completing that goal or taking that action are like slim to none. So I say, like, what's the goal here? great. And I don't say, I'm definitely not, there are some designers who are like, no social media on your website. Like, but I'm not, I like social media and I do it. Every single person I work with, I will scroll to the bottom and I will click every single social media icon because I want to see that they're alive mm -hmm. and I want to see that they're active yeah. and that what I'm seeing on their website matches what they're sharing on social media. I also don't want to see anything crazy on their social media that makes me like red flag it, like back it up, you know? <laughs> like, well, I think that's a good point, <laughs> right? I don't know what you're talking about, but for <laughs> me, when I see certain values mm -hmm. or certain things being pushed out there. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, I, and they say, they being whoever, everybody else besides me, put your like personal beliefs out there because you want to attract and push people away, which is true. Mm -hmm. It does, it pushes me away. <laughs> and it attracts me. Like certain people that I align right. with will attract me. Yes. But anyways, continue. I'm so sorry. Yes. No, it's true though. I'm, I'm the same way because you like, and I've even had fellow service providers really share like everything that's going on in the world. They share their opinion about it. And I have clients said to me that they are like, I don't want to work with those so people so. anymore yeah. because I saw this yeah. like, or they shared something or whatever that is. And I'm like, I get that. You know, it rubbed you the wrong way, and that's what you're thinking about when you're thinking about their business. Have you ever had anybody ask you, um, what do you believe about so and something going on in the world? Um, like a client? I think, I'm trying to think. I try to steer. I definitely have had people share their opinions. Yeah. And so it's like, okay. Um, but I definitely. Ask. So I'm the same way. It's none of your business what my right. personal beliefs are, right? Right. Uh, but that's not what the world thinks. The world thinks that they need to know because right. they want to know where their dollars are going yeah. towards yeah. Uh, because they believe that that's going to somehow right. change the world. And I, 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 you know, when they say, how do you believe about this, this, and this? I'll say, you know what? If you would like to know how I feel about something, let's go out. Let's go out for coffee. Let's go out for lunch. Let's have a conversation and get to know each other yeah. first never take me up on the offer. I had like two different people. It was during like a couple years ago. Uh, and that's because it aligns with how I really believe. These things that are so important that we feel we've got to like, right. they're not surface level social media conversations yeah. to have because then you're just going to put me, my beliefs into a little box and say, you're just like X, Y, Z. Yeah. That's not fair right. to like other humans. Yes. So I, I'm always like interested. Yeah, I do put, so on, I do have on my about page kind of like my values on yeah. there. And I will say like, and like working with my copywriter, like we did, like my values are my commitment to you. And yeah. so what do I think is important? And so I will put that and I do have a very strong faith. And so that I do put like a taste of that on there just so like, it can push away certain people that yes. maybe and it, and, it, and I will like if and I don't it's not I think like the most like faith thing I have on there is like I um, uh, donate a portion of profit to have it out for humanity yeah. and it is kind of like a faith based organization but it is about like creating homes for people who need it which aligns with which aligns you know yeah. with with everything and so um, but if someone's turned off by that I don't really want to work with them anyway yeah so there's plenty of people to work with um, but I'm definitely not so. Social media, that's social media. Squirrel. Right? So it's definitely, um, I, so my motto for social media is like, hey, I'm alive, I'm professional, and I'm current. And so personally, I post things that will then validate my service and it will, um, like bring people back to my website. So whether that's, I do, I do do content marketing and so I do do blogs and so forth. Um, and then I share like obviously website launches on there. Um, so for clients, a lot of people are like, well, what do you think about this? Should I be on here? Should I do this? Should I do that? And so my, what I've always recommended is start with one. 
-hmm. Start with the one where you know your clients are. So I don't care what anyone else in the world is doing. You ask your, again, your ideal clients, your target audience, your favorite clients, what social media platform do they hang out with the most? And it doesn't need to be like professionally. It can be like they're posting pictures of their grandkids or whatever. So like, where are they? Mm -hmm. And then that's where you should hang out. Like that's where you should put your focus and start there, do that really well. And then when you've completely exhausted the possibilities of that, or you have more bandwidth or you have an assistant, okay, then what's that next one that's gonna help you? Where's that kind of next level that's gonna support your business? And then touch on that. Um, And so like for, like a lot of times too, I will also say like the other reason I use social media is because I continues to nurture relationships I have with existing clients. Mm. And so like, I just saw one of my clients, like she's a grandma for the first, like she just had her first grandbaby. And I was like, Oh my goodness, this is so cute. And we're messaging. And so like that builds more rapport. Like, yes, I'm taking care of her website, but I also love watching her family like grow up and blossom. Uh, And so creating those sort of relationships as well. And I think for interior designers, for photographers, for service-based businesses, like having, again, the personal branding, like you are a person, so show up as a person, not like a hard business. Yes, entity. (laughs) What is this entity? (laughs) Okay, so you have a, let's say a client Mm -hmm. has a thousand dollars to spend. Mm -hmm. Obviously your websites are not a thousand dollars. You're in more of the luxury end. What would you recommend this person who has a creative business, whether it's a designer or whether it is a, anybody in the creative world, Mm -hmm. how would you suggest them investing this $1,000 that's going to actually help them move forward? Great question. I have a thousand follow-up questions. (laughs) So I think my answer would be it depends. I would want to know where they are in their business. So do they have clients? Are they having an income? They don't have clients. So no clients. Do they know like their services? Yes, they know their services. They and know they, what they want to provide. They know what, do they want to know who they want to provide that for? I don't know, do they? See? <laughs> See? So I will say... I'm like, I don't know, for $1,000 though. I, I mean, know, it right? seems like a lot, but you but can't. It's, it is. For somebody who's launching a business, they're like, I've got 1000 bucks. What can I, like, what can I do? Yes. So I will say, so, and it doesn't need to be like this one. And this is just from my own personal experience. So when I started the website design business, I wanted like fresh start. Like I wanted to build it from the ground up, start from scratch, do everything right. I didn't want to piecemeal it. I really wanted to like, build that foundation. And so I invested in Marie Forleo's B school. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is not a thousand dollars anymore, (laughs) but it was, it it was low. It was definitely closer to the thousand. I know it was over a thousand, but now I think it's, I mean, obviously everything else has gone up. So I think it's a little bit more than that, like double or ish. Um, but and not necessarily even being that like, yes, I love that program. And what that did was it it allowed me like just to work through the program with Mm -hmm. also a group of other people building businesses and have the foundation, like profit clarity, marketing, email list, like, um, website, you know, all of this other, like building relationships, networking and so forth. So I really kind of started from the ground up and I did all the work. Like Mm -hmm. I did every possible worksheet, um, joined all of the classes, you know, did all of the, the groups. And so you were an A student in school, weren't you? You were like teacher's pet, like front row. So I was in elementary school (laughs) and then I hit middle school and high school. And then I'm like, why am I doing this? This is pointless. And I definitely got into like, it needed to feel aligned and it wasn't. So like I could, I excelled at the things I liked to do, which is, (laughs) <laughs> ribbon through your life story. <laughs> I did. I did. It's like, I just didn't want to do that. So, exactly. um, so I would say, you know, in investing in something that can help you build the foundation of yeah. your business and having, and, and set you up with like all of the right steps for you, um, would probably be the, my, advice. I agree. That's what, if somebody came and asked me that question, it would be, uh, invest in a program that's going to number one, make you start taking it serious Mm -hmm. because you just put your hard earned dollars into something. 
Number two, lay down the steps for you. Yes. Um, and then number three, gave you those very actionable items for you to take because some people are like, oh, put them in Facebook ads or put them in, no. you know, photography or even a, a DIY website. It's like, but you don't know any of the most foundational items, which right. is like the follow-up questions you were asking. Who's your target audience? Right. Who, who, who are you speaking to? Right. What are you selling? Right. You know, what's the price point that you're selling it at? Yes. Like how much are you selling it for? Right. What groups do you need to be in yeah. so that you can start attracting those people? Yes. What are the words you need to say? Like there's so many. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that we're aligned on that. It's like, but if you get the education, spend that money on education mm -hmm. and give you a roadmap yeah. to take that thousand dollars and turn it into hopefully a million dollars first take that thousand dollars and spend it in Facebook ads or right. it's like, and I did that. Like I, it's so funny you say in the house, like, wow, I totally live that <laughs> with my coaching business. I remember I built the website. I got the business cards. I bought ads to, I don't know what, even for what I'm sure I saw some article, but I definitely, I did all the things that I was supposed to do before. Like I did the the meat, like the foundation of it. And so it was kind of just like sending it off, like into wherever. Yeah. And then you pay across yes. your fingers, hoping it comes back. Right. Like how did everyone else make all this money, you know, and do all of this. And it's like, well, like you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, like, I don't think I like knew that I was doing that, but I knew like this is a fresh start. And so I wanted to start it with the foundation and and honestly i feel like my other advice is making the investments i feel like it's so common nowadays where people are just like they're signing up for everything yeah this group program and that group program and this coaching program and that course and i'm just going to collect all this information and it's going to be so great and then they don't do anything yeah and so literally i feel like for the first like three or four years in my business, the only investment I made was into B-School. Mm -hmm. And I just took, I mean, it was a lifetime. So I just like went back through it and I used, like I did it like over and over again. But there were so many people who joined with me that were like, oh, I haven't finished yet. Or I haven't started or I haven't. And I'm like, what are you, like, I remember being at the gym on like the stationary bike with my notebook and I have my AirPods or they weren't AirPods at the time. I don't yeah. know what they were. There was something in my ear and I was listening and I'm watching and I'm taking notes. The kids are in the gym daycare. And like, as soon as a lesson dropped, I was on it. And I yeah. was like, we're, like just devouring it because, but I was like, I don't know how you really like teach that, but I would yeah. say don't make an investment unless you know you're going to follow through and do yeah. the work. And I don't know, like, how to teach someone or give advice to someone who who does buy all those things and like halfway does it. And so maybe maybe it's not a program, maybe it's a, a coach or a group program that gives yeah. you that accountability so it's not like a self run thing. So maybe it's a, a maybe you do a higher investment or you find a different program that's going to work for your personality, but like really it's not just about the investment, it's about investing and putting in the work for it. Yeah. I like that. Where do you see, my last question for you, where do you see the online space, specifically website, mm -hmm. marketing space? That's not correct terminology. Where do you see websites going? Like for people, not, not necessarily just the DIYers, but how do you see people using their websites as a creative service business owner? So there's so many trends and there's always like the latest and greatest going on. Uh, I'm always like team timeless where you like, I, so where I see it going is personal relationships. Like kind of what we talked about, what do you build? And just having that personal relationship, really understanding who your ideal client is and like just speaking directly to them and providing them something like putting your blinders on and building something just for your target audience, just for your ideal client, zoning out or like anything else that's going on and really marketing and speaking to that person and creating an experience for them, I feel is like, part of me feels like that's where we should be, yeah. <laughs> but also where I feel like hopefully more people are going to be going and just providing a really just exceptional service, an exceptional product for your target audience. Um, I think that's, that's a huge insight because especially with photographers, uh, not just photographers, but they want to speak to everyone. So if they're a family photographer or if they are a 
headshot photographer or photographer in general, they want to photograph anything and everything. Mm -hmm. They don't want to speak to one person. Mm -hmm. Same thing with real estate agents. When I photograph my real estate agent clients, you know, and I try to get them to kind of zero in on mm -hmm. who it is that they're speaking to, the first time home buyer, the veterans, mm -hmm. are they coming in from another state or another country? It's like, no, 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 anybody that's got money that can buy a home. Right. When you're saying you see success lying within those people that are really niching down. For sure. I mean, how do you market to everyone? Yeah. Right? Like, even Walmart has an ideal client, you know? Yeah. Like, and I mean, look at all their products. Right. <laughs> you know, so, so it's like, I don't know. I feel like the success comes, and even for me too, like, I could build a website pretty much, I could figure out how to build a website pretty for much anyone. for any business yeah. and anyone. And I've definitely had, like, one-offs <laughs> like well, I have had one-offs but I've had like other people like um my brother owns like a government um contracting agency I don't even know the term for it yeah. some some sort of business with government and um and we've like talked about different like jobs and like like different projects and I'm just like no I don't want to do that like I could I can do that and it's so funny where he's like really you could and I'm like He's like, come on, this is like government contract money. Right, you know, like this is like money. And I'm like, mm -mm, that does not, I would not want to do that. I was like, I would like, like crawl to my desk. This like, needs to be an Instagram reel. The what? This needs to be an Instagram <laughs> reel where it's like, I'm sure there's like little memes out there where it's like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Where all the different types of websites to build. It's like, right? I just want to do interior design. Yes, but also too, like, in, and I don't want to say like, it's a win-win. I was going to say selfishly, like, but it's a win-win because I like creating content. So I do get a lot of like SEO traffic and so forth in like people coming in from Google, but it's, you know, interior designers are searching for things specific to their business and help specific to them. So would you rather go to someone who specializes in exactly what you do and only does that they eat breathe live that or would you rather go to someone who's like a little bit good at like everything and they kind of help like mentally that's exhausting like if I have one month she's an interior designer and then another month I'm working with like a veterinarian like yeah. that's like hang on let me do a lot of research because yeah. that's is out of my wheelhouse and so I feel like providing for service providers not only is it going to help you in your success and like in your marketing and so forth, it's also going to be a lot easier yeah. for you. Like it's so much simpler to talk to one person or one industry and excel at that and be like known for this than to be like, oh, I do a little bit of that and I could do that and I could do your wedding and I could do your like yeah. whatever that is. Um, so yeah, niching down. Do you say niche or niche? I say niche because okay. it sounds nice. nice. <laughs> right? Like, I know people would say like the riches are in the niches, but I like to say niche because it sounds very proper. <laughs> so I'm from Indiana. So when I hear niche, I'm like, all right, let's 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 figure out your niche. You know, like it goes into like that country Hoosier accent for me when I say it. I'm like, no no no, Leah. Niche. Niche. <laughs> we niche here. Identify your niche. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um okay, so as we wrap this up, what is one last piece of advice that you would want to impart on our listeners or viewers on how they can take their website to the next level? I would say just go back. I'm going to sound like a broken wheel. Go back to your ideal client, sit in their shoes and imagine they're visiting your website for the first time. And how can you provide the best possible experience for them when they're on your website because that's like it's like the first step it's the first introduction to you and your business and the service that you're providing so how can you make that the best possible experience for them to then have them lead into that next step love it i love it